Hello again, this is another clip about uh, the chapter 6 from the LXL scheme of work for Core 1 AS Maths. Chapter 6 includes sequences and series, and the series can be described using this thing called the sigma notation. And it's this that I want to explain in this particular clip. Basically, I know it says here, but the presence of a sigma is used to tell someone that you, you need to do some adding here. That's what it means. It means stuff is going to be added. Um, and basically the reason it exists is because it got really annoying writing a big long list of stuff to add. And we thought, is there a better way of writing the fact I want to do this? In terms of efficiently writing it, in some ways you might think, well, could I write this using a little bit less ink? Well, it turns out you can write these things using a bit less ink. So here you go on the right hand side, that's like the traditional thing. And these three dots are really important here. They mean that there, there could be lots of things in between. So I know I've only written four terms, but this might have lots and lots of terms. So this is what you'd have to write out traditionally if you were trying to add them all up. And this is designed to replace having to do that. So there's three key bits that we need to look at in order to do this and I'll hopefully explain some of these things for you. First of all is this UR and this gives you the, the general structure of each of these terms. So this could be like a, a formula in order to calculate what the term values actually are. And then these numbers above and below the sigma tell you when and where to start and stop. So you first of all substitute r equals 1 into this formula and that will get you the first term that you want to add. And then you do the next one which is r equals 2 and r equals 3 and r equals 4 and so on and so on until you get to whatever number this is and that is the last number that you put into this formula and that therefore gets you the last term. Okay, so here's a summary of basically what I've just said um, for you to have a little read through. When these type of sigma questions come up on the exam, as far as I can see, I've looked through quite a few papers over the years, uh, there's basically two different strategies for you to do, and it depends on the features of this. So if you've got a really small n, so like there's not many terms that you need to add up, and especially if you are, so that formula that you have there, if that looks really weird, if it looks like nothing you've ever seen before, then that's one type of question. And the other type of question is if, it, if n's really big, and you know, like it could be like a hundred things you've got to add together, and especially if this, this um, particular function here, means that when you work out the first few, you realize very quickly that you've got an arithmetic series because the terms are increasing or decreasing by the same amount each time. Well, here's what I think you should do in those situations. So again, small n, unfamiliar form of this formula here. Basically, just work them all out. If there's only a few of them, work them all out and just add them up. If it's bigger and if it's got an arithmetic series type structure, then there is a formula, isn't there? This SN. And again, there's another video clip which should help you do that. So look at arithmetic series for that. But yeah, two different approaches for two different types of question. One thing that I really did want to draw your attention to is this warning, and I really resisted to saying this before, okay? So I don't want you to always think that this number at the top is the number of terms. It happens to be in this case, because I start from 1, and you can see that essentially they're all labelled, aren't they? So that means there's n things there, but there is a risk. If you look at the next one, what we've got here is it starts from 0, Okay, and it still goes up to n, so this is where the danger is. I don't you think, all right, that number at the top, that's the number of terms. Because look, it's not, is it? There's an extra one here. And so I really, really want you to be mindful of that. This thing here, when it starts at zero, has got n plus one terms. Just take care when you're doing that one. As I said, this is uh, one of a few clips I've been doing about uh, chapter six from the, the core one LXL syllabus. Please do look at all the other ones and good luck with all your revision.